I'm going to make this stuff go back and I'm going to try and bring this forward by adding a little more darkness to some of this contrast to some of these things. Ever have a bad painting and you're not exactly sure what to do with it? Our guest today is Richard Lindenberg. Richard, what are you going to talk about? Oh, pretty easy. You know, very often I take home a uh, painting from the field, sits on the shelf, and I look at it, and it just needs some punch. It needs some color. It needs some contrast. It could need a lot of things. So I'm going to deal with a large 16 by 20 I did in the field today, and I'll show you how, to, how I would work that. All right. So you're going to show us how to take a painting you did outdoors in plein air and make it better once you've had a chance to think about it. So you're going to work on a painting. Let's get started so we can get right into it. Uh, oh, right. look at that. That is so it looks done to me. What's wrong? No, with no, it? no, no. You're you're seeing it. There's so much I saw in this painting when I was in the field and you bring it home and it's just lacking touches of contrast and sharp edges and a little more push. So I'm gonna work on that today. Um, I don't often work 16 by 20 out in the field. So you don't have a lot of time. And at a garapata, the wind often comes up, which it did that day. I was with the California Art Club. We have about 40 painters out there on the cliff. Um, so I brought it home and I did three other little ones and they were fine, but this big one needed need a little more work so uh if I, ha I have a I, I have a question for you i'm going to ask sure. you right away because i see something what uh, i can see things in other people's paintings that i can't see in my own uh what is your focal point it's going to be in this general area it's the receding this is going to come forward that's going to go back and this area over here is going to be the focal uh, the reason I ask that is those two cliffs, so the one coming down on the right and the one coming down right there. No, that, that one, that go over to the left. No, yeah. go over further. Right. That that one, if you go to the top of that and all the way to the top, go all the way to the top and now move your finger all the way down to the bottom. Now that is pointing to one spot. Now, if you take that one to your left, the angular rock, that's also an arrow. So what's happening is you've got an arrow pointing to that spot. To me, that's where uh, a good opportunity for focal point. So it's you're, in that you're area. Saying this should be gone and that should be coming over this way. I'm not saying it should or shouldn't. I'm just saying that you're, it's it's creating Stands a big out. arrow. It's pointing to those little rocks in the front. Right. Let's see what we can do. I'll, All I'll right. Let's take your <laughs> All right. You want me to go at it? Yeah, go for it, baby. Okay. All right. Richard uh, and I have known each other for a long time. He was kind of a, a, a painting buddy with me when I lived in California. We'd go painting um, pretty much every week with some friends, which I miss. I have not had that in the 12 years I've lived here. Go ahead, Rich. Okay. So, you know, first thing I want to do is pop the focal point like Eric's talking about. Very lightly, I just hold the brush. All right, so I'm gonna make this stuff go back and I'm gonna try and bring this forward by adding a little more darkness to some of this contrast to some of these things. All and right. Refining these shapes a little bit. Um, so, you know, it's it's all experimentation. I hope, I hope it works out. It'll work out. Uh, it certainly should be better than what I had before. All right, so the lighter color back here is certainly going to, you know, draw the, draw the eye to it. Do you want to talk about making things recede so they go back? Yeah. Well, because and what of the color, and the question the from Lori Bond is, what color did you use for that highlight you just put in there? It's, how do you make any color? First of all, I'm colorblind with blues and greens. Are but, you? But... Um, that's just a basically an ochre, a little bit of orange and white. Um, okay. So you're, you're asking about atmosphere, especially at an oceanside painting like this, much bluer going back. This whole area is, is a good value uh, other than a little more darkness down below. But I'm going to pull this forward by adding a little more darkness to it. So um, what, what, I think what I'll do is I'll go at that right now. 
Uh, and if I made this the same value as that, then there would be no push and pull. Right. So I'm going to try and make this a little bit darker, but I'm not ready to go there yet. So Okay. Where are you ready to go? Um, all right. One of the things I wanted to do, I got some premixed colors here, and hopefully they'll work. Let's see. Okay, here's a nice light color. So I'm going to try and put some contrast in a darker color. So for those people who might not know, darker colors make a painting come forward and lighter colors tend to push it back. And uh, as you go back, yellows diminish and get bluer and uh, so lighter and bluer. Right. And, you know, one of the things that I find, you got to ground. All of this is the same contrast at the base, at the ocean. So I want to ground it by putting some more darkness down to it. And that'll be my starting point. It's already better. And I can always lighten it up. Mm -hmm. So... You know, I can lighten this area to give the illusion of, of a little darkness and grounding down at the bottom there. And back here, it would be less darkness, but still, to punch it, it needs a little dark. Especially at, at a focal point. And if it's too dark, one of the things about a, a dry painting if I put it on and it doesn't look right, I can just turp it right off and start again rather than go over it. All right, so I'm going to keep working on this area a little bit. All right. If you just tuned in, Richard Lindenberg is our guest and he is fixing a plein air painting he did in the field. It's a 16 by 20. And he sees some things wrong with it. So he's working on those things now to make it a better painting. Richard, you yeah. know, you there are purists out there, and, I, and I'm not being critical of that. There are some who say a plein air painting should never be touched after you leave the location. And there right. are others who say, look, the goal is to make a, a good painting no matter what. You have any thoughts on that? Sure. Uh, for me... I don't know how how long anybody, any of your audience has been out there in the field painting. And of course, my goal is to make a winner right off the bat. Uh, but the changing conditions out there make it so tough. So I have a shelf in my studio that for me, I must, um, I must give it some time, look at it and see if... Um, see if it needs any refinement and you can really you can really take a painting that is just dull and missing stuff and pull it pull it to life so although this one had a good start i still feel i needed to go at it um afterwards so no i'm not a purist but you can be sure i really do want to finish a painting and have it work outside you want to talk about how you're holding your brush? Karen Schumacher mentioned that uh, she's fascinated by that. Oh, well, um, I'm, you know, normally when I'm in the field, I can step back and I hold it more out at the end of the brush. But when I'm in the studio, I don't have a lot of room to go back because it's really just a spare room in my house. I'm trying to go quick because I know you don't have a lot of time. This little bit of contrast at the top of a, of a hill usually happens. This area up here needed some definition. That's the Ice plants, they turn, they turn in the fall really nicely. I'm using a big brush 
rather than a little brush. All right, so let's see what you were saying, Eric. I'm gonna try and, I'm gonna try and make this head more towards that little bit of ocean over there. Breaking it up a little bit too. You know, you and I were painting together in um, <laughs> Fall Color Week. We were painting in the snow and uh, we were painting this uh, river and you pointed out to me something that I always forget. You know, I made my edges too clean. That river was just too perfect. And you always talked about breaking up edges. That's where I hold the brush right in the balance point and just let it do the work for me. Okay. Where is this painting? Did you say Garapata? Garapata. Where? With Garapata, outside Monterey, Carmel, near south of Point Lobos. It's a favorite of um, favorite of pa painters that come to California. Yeah, okay. I've never painted there. I've painted. You're kidding. Oh. I don't think so. Put it on your wish list. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to take the RV out to California soon and come see all my buddies. Go painting. You guys, we have uh, in the comments, if you leave a comment, you might be able to win a prize, which is my book, Make More Money Selling Your Art. And uh, you can win it by putting a comment. If you put a, a comment and tell us where, you are watching from, we like that. And you can win from anywhere in the world. Now you're putting your brightest white right in there, looks like. I'm trying to make that a focal point so that all of this stuff is gonna converge right at that area. If it's too bright, I'm just gonna come in, soften it a bit. Looks good to me. Okay, so I haven't touched any of that water down there, which I'm gonna blue in the shadows and uh, yellow white in the uh, highlights. All right. If you guys like what Richard's doing, give him a thumbs up or a heart. He needs to. He needs that recognition. He's so insecure. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, at my age. Recognition is not as important as you might think it is. Yeah, I would imagine that's right. I don't think I'm ever going to be uh, remembered as one of the famous California painters, although I have over 300 paintings probably in people's home and homes in this area. Well, you're famous today. I'll tell you what. There's a, a Shawasti from uh, from India who says Namaste. Namaste, Shawasti. Ah. Shawati. I'm sorry, I pronounced the name wrong. The people from all over the world watching today, Rich. Okay, cool. And on the replays, there will be more. Usually more on the replays because people can watch after work. Netherlands. Hello, Netherlands. Scotland. Hello, Scotland. Okay, so I want to come back here. Notice I'm, because it's dry, I can use my fingers a lot more. You know how I feel about that. How do you feel? Well, a painting with your fingers, it goes right into your liver. Uh, well, I don't paint with my fingers, and I do have a glove on that oh, hand. Oh, you have a glove. All right. Well, that's okay then. Hello, Adirondacks. British Columbia, nice to see you here. Thank you. Our Again, guest today is Richard that. Lindenberg, really and he's squinting. pushing pushing, uh, working on a painting that he wanted to fix. 
Hello, Baron from Deutschland. Wie geht's? Ich bin Eric. Hello, Maui. Aloha. I want to go to Maui Aloha. too. Aloha. Quite frankly, I want to go anywhere. I'm so tired of being stuck. That really helps that edge. I you find that, you know, the light at the top of these cliffs, they, they're uh, usually a little bit on the dark side, which tends to make it feel better. So how do you take something brown and make it feel cool because it's in shade? Do you add a little blue into it? What do you do? Where, give me an example. Where are you talking about? Well, just in general, if you have something that's in shadow and it's a brown rock, do you try to cool it down somehow so that you've got the contrast be between warm and cool? Yeah, well, brown is, uh, you know, brown can be a, a warm color. It can be a cool color. But uh, if, it, if you want to brown it, I mean, blue it down, you just add blue. If you want to cool it, just add some blue. But try not to be stark blue. Yeah. Question, uh, yeah. since we raised the issue about plein air versus studio, does it make a difference in plein air competitions? Uh, you mean, do they frown yeah, upon touching up in a competition? Yeah, I mean, do, do you do a lot of competitions, so do they require that you paint them all on location, or do they allow you to take it back to your room and touch it up? It's. I don't think there's a, I don't think there's a plein air police about that. You know, I think that if you want to make it work, plein air to me is painting outside on, on site. Um, so if you're painting outside on site, you find that you're missing a little something. Sure. I don't think there's any, I've never had a competition that's given any trouble with that. The only trouble would be if you're really making the painting inside, you know, then it's not ethical, but who, nobody's even going to know that. Yeah, well, that, so a couple of painters got busted in a couple of competitions a couple of years ago. One of them had, you know, you go to a competition, they stamp the back of the canvas right. and they say, okay, go paint, you know, go paint this week. And then uh, one of them had glued that stamped canvas over another painting that he Ooh. had painted uh, from photographs in his hotel room. Ooh. So he got blackballed. Oh, Everybody nice. knows. I mean, ethics in life. You know, yeah. ethics is an important thing. I mean, that's up to the individual. I mean, yeah. okay, so. That, that really recedes back there. That's nice. That really has made a big difference. Okay, there's a little too much purple here, so I'm going to go to a bigger brush. All right. And I'm going to see what I can do. Luis says, you're a great artist, Richard. Oh, thank you. Who said that, Philippe? Luis. Luis Manuel Diaz. Ah. Luis, where are you from? What you just did also gave it a little bit more form. Still... All right. Now, if you wanted that to recede, would you darken the rocks in the front, like that front rock on the right? Would you darken that even more? This? No, the one right under, the big one, right right at, at the edge of the canvas, way yeah. down. No, in the water, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, again, the problem with it is often grounding. Uh, if it's not dark enough, if it's the same color throughout, so like, I'll ground it by darkening it down below. Yeah. That's something that people forget. You know, that's true with a house. It's true with anything. You've got to trees ground it. Trees especially. Trees, yes. You do great trees. All right. So now, now what's happening is the, the, uh, 
This is called crowdsourcing. We have people telling us what needs to be fixed. You ready okay, for this? Okay, go ahead. Okay, Linda Camat Camarada says, middle right, there are three brown dots to make a cute face. Middle right, three brown dots. Three brown, this? I don't I don't know. I don't. I don't know where they are. That's, that's a good comment. There it goes. But, you know, because once you see something like that, you can never let go of it. Yeah, that that actually just helped. All right, Linda, you get the applause today. Thumbs up for Linda. Oh, so she's. Oh, you I know where she's. See this right. now. Okay, wait. Hold your brush right where it is. Go, go up one inch. There. Now go to the right. You know, yeah, those two dots, those, uh, those are okay. the dots you saying are making a face. <laughs> this is called paint by committee. Uh, we have fun here. All right. Does anybody else have anything that's really uh, bugging them? <laughs> Somebody Remember, said, this is a rush, everybody. Yeah, I know. It's no pressure. You know, you got a bunch of people watching, trying to fix a painting. I think that, that helped. Better. Thank you, whoever that was. Yeah. Okay, All this right. side, can you feel it now pushed back? Yeah. This whole section? Yeah. So I can leave that and move on over to here. I don't like what's going on here. All so, right. What What do you not like about it? Tell us first. Um, well, it's just a sharp line down, and it needs to be broken up. And if I if I look at the original picture, it's really not as sharp a green up there as it appears to be in the painting. So um, one of the things that they that I saw was um, <laughs> oh, Rich. <laughs> okay, so they're getting they're, they're, the audience is coming up with new things now. All right, I okay, see go. it. I see it. Okay, so where you see the orange. Uh, which is a uh, a ground cover. You see those two ice, those two slots right there. That one, two. It's making a skeleton face. There you go. You're well. Now it's a, now it's a different. You got to break up the nose, going down the hill. There you go. That made a big difference. <laughs> I love it. I I wish I had an audience telling me all the time what to do. Well, you could have that. I mean, we could have you on every day. Just uh, today's painting. All right. So this is bothering me here. All right. And I got to figure out how to make that work. Let's just do a little bit. If you just tuned in, which I see many people have, uh, Richard Lindenberg is taking a plein air painting that he did. It's dry, and now he's trying to fix it. He's, he sees things that he wanted to change, and so he's making the front uh, cliffs come forward, and he pushed the back cliffs to recede and put some white and some bright light in those back cliffs, so that becomes his focal point to draw you into that portal, if you will. Okay, somebody says they see a horse head. I don't see that. Oh, a horse head. Okay. Oh, I see. Yeah, there's an ear sticking up. Now that I now that they brought yes. it up. Yep, right there. <laughs> Rachel will never come on the show again. He's like, all right, this audience no, is no, tough. No, I actually like what they're doing. Yeah, I do too. I think it's nice. You know, you cannot see things in your own paintings, especially when you, you get move close so to quickly. Them. Yeah. I take much more time when I'm out in the field. Yeah. Well, I sometimes will take a photograph of a painting. I, I did this the other day. I had this painting. It was done. It was ready. I was getting ready to send it off to the gallery, and I sent it to a friend, and I said, "What what's wrong with it? Don't tell me what's right with it. Just tell me what's wrong. And uh, 
he pointed out something I couldn't see, and it was terrific. Now, somebody says that the orange uh, ice plant is really drawing the eye. Good. That's what you want. Okay. Well, it's a little hot, but that succulent is really uh, important in this area. Yeah. So I'm going to even go further with it. Yeah, people who buy California paintings want California um, ice plants or the purples or whatever is happening at the time. Are things in bloom now? The uh, I was just there. Um, it's not quite like this. Uh, it is at certain times. Yeah. But, all right, I'm going to try something else right now. I'm going to go at that water a little bit more. How much time do you think we got? Oh, you got a little time. Let's say another 15. Okay. If people want to hang. Hello, Norway. Welcome, Roger. I'm mixing some color, and we're going to see what happens here. All right. It's a tense moment, ladies and gentlemen. Richard is mixing color. Ooh. And then I'm going to put some more of that, the wave motion in. So would you would you make the color richer and brighter as you lead into that focal point, or does it matter? Down here, up here. Well, yeah, as you lead it. By in. darkening it, it it certainly adds in. Um, oh yeah, it makes that white pop, doesn't it? You sure make this look easy. Okay, so now I, the horizon, I always, I always like to do on the horizon a little bit of something. So let's put a little fog bank or. You move your camera up just a touch because we can't really see what you're working on up there. There we go. I see the elephant too. Somebody said they see an elephant. Yeah. Let's see how many animals we can come up with. <laughs> I have a painting that I did years ago that hung in my house forever. And, and um, I, every time I'd stare at it, I'd see things like that. And then it finally drove me nuts. And I just grabbed it, took it out to the studio and changed it. Once and, somebody points that out, it's very difficult to yeah. get it out of your head. Yeah, and sometimes that happens with a painting you got from somebody else. Whoops. Whoops. I see a baby elephant and a mother elephant, actually. We're, yeah, this is somebody said, are we at a zoo? Thank you, Paul. Said what? <laughs> Somebody said, are we at a zoo? Where's the elephant? Uh, it, it is. There's two of them. There's one where the horse head was. You've still got eyes there, which is the big cliff to the left. And then there's a little baby elephant with its trunk sticking out right next to it. Down here? But, yeah, the, the big cliff looks more like a mastodon. And then you got a little elephant there. Elaine Miller says she sees dead people. She does that a lot, though. She's crazy. Uh, cows drinking water. Good. Right. Gorilla eyebrows on the left hill. <laughs> Richard, it's never going to be done. That I'll tell you what you're doing back there really makes that better. That's how you soften those edges. Okay, so now that's convincing. I see the waves. Okay. Um, 
Where Matthew are these West animals? says, don't Where listen the to them, Richard. Uh, Rich, Nancy West says, don't listen to them, Richard. Just keep painting. Nice. Guys enjoying this? Give him a thumbs up. All right, let's go. So what are you doing now? Just highlighting the ocean over there a bit more. Bring your eye over that area. Johnny Schooley says, I see a painting that I wish I could do. Johnny, <laughs> you can do this. You can learn it. So I, I mentioned earlier that I knew Richard. Uh, we used to go out painting all the time. And he was a good painter. But then uh, something happened. Uh, and that was that he, he uh, ha had a change in his employment and decided to go full tilt, full-time painter. And just watching how his work got better, it took about, about a year, maybe 18 months. And after that, I mean, there was a 60% difference just because he was painting so much more. And, uh, you know, if you can get the brush time, it sure makes a difference. It does, it really does. I worked 50 years, a regular job. So I deserve some retirement time. Well, you're hardly retired. Well, what can I say? But you're, you're enjoying life and you're doing what you love. Absolutely. Yeah, Richard. I'm so grateful. Can you imagine being shut indoors without, a, without an avocation like this? It's a, yeah. uh, you know, it's been a rough couple of years, and I'm so thankful to have had this painting in my life, this this oh, yeah. option to go outside and paint by myself. Okay, now. Richard was the CEO of a very big, very successful company. I won't talk about what it was for many, many years, and I think, you know, we've talked about it. He's just so much happier now as a painter. And so we have a lot of people who are, I'd love to know your professions in the comments. Uh, a lot of people who, who are professionals, a lot of people who paint and are taking up painting. So that's a good way to get rid of your stress. I, I know if I have a stressful day, if I go out to the studio, I can't think about my stress. No, it's totally meditation. I decided last night I was going to try sculpting. And um, so I went out and my box of clay was completely dry. It was like a big brick. So I decided to set up a, and do a drawing, uh, a cast drawing last night, which I haven't really done much of and very humbling. <laughs> okay. Can put a little... Hey, I see a retired art teacher in there. If you look on my Facebook, we've got a competition going. You can, we're going to give away three Plen Air Live attendances to uh, art teachers, one for each uh, college, uh, middle, and high school. So make sure you check that out and do what you're supposed to do. You'll find it on my Facebook page. Psychotherapist. I think they're analyzing okay. us, Carol. Uh, go for the knife now. All right. Knife. Talk, talk about the knife. You can't control it. So <laughs> it adds a lot of texture to the painting. We're getting a lot of different jobs all over the map. Everything from interior designer to project manager to retired dental assistant, equine artist, uh, doctor, uh, cool, accountant.
Strengthening that edge really helps too. And breaking it up. Scott, uh, I helped out Scott Christensen once about, I don't know, six, eight years ago. I remember and that. He, and he taught me about opposing brush strokes. Um, What's that mean? Instead of having having all your brushes, brushwork going in one direction, which we tend to do, especially in a, a strong horizontal like that, for every one that goes that way, you want to put some going that way, just to break up, just to break up the strokes from going in in one direction. So, yeah. like there, for every one, two that go down that way, I tend to put some this way. Max Ginsburg. Uh, says that everybody does hair in the direction of the hair. He does the opposite direction, and it makes it feel more form-like. And then he'll put in a couple of long strokes over those, uh, but he says it's a really great way to do hair. I'm, I haven't tried that yet. You don't do any portrait or figure, do you? Uh, very rarely. I have a hard enough time doing this. Why would I? <laughs> I do some, you know, I'll sketch and I'll do things like that. But not break up that eyebrow right there. You've got a big eyebrow right there. That big white note down a little bit. That edge. Break that up. There you go. That's good. There you go. Now you don't have as much of an elephant there. Big difference. All right. So all the other artists that are seeing all the comments from the, the audience and how to fix your painting, they're going to be mortified and never come on. Michelle Byrne, she's going to be like, nope, not coming on. <laughs> Michelle, you're invited. I like it. I like that they're commenting because it, it, I don't have a lot of time here, right? Yep. So it gives me an eye, eye, a lot of extra eyeballs. Uh, Jamie says, what about the left-handed people? What direction they follow? Same concept. Just. What do you mean? Well, I'm I think she's saying that left-handed people might make their brush strokes a different direction. Well, it's the same theory. Even if it's left-handed, you don't want to go have them all going in one direction. If that's what he's talking about. Yeah. Do you put secret codes and secret messages in your paintings? Like, you know, the oh, initials, yeah, yeah. Right. initials of I, your I wife. I have to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It, put in the comments if you're left-handed or right-handed. I'm just curious. Me? No, the other people, the people watching. Okay, this is not working. All right. Tell us why when you do that. Um, the shapes are just going the same way. So it's the of shapes. And I can fix it pretty easy just by going. Uh, so far, right-handed is winning. We need more lefties in here. Dolores says she's watching on YouTube. The picture quality is better there. Well, sometimes it's about, you know, every, every, every place is different in terms of how they feed. Linda is ambidextrous. All right, Linda. Can you paint with two brushes at one time? I watched somebody do that once. All right. So, Rich, we're going to wrap it up here in a minute. Uh, tell us what just what you th you would be changing uh that you're not going to be able to have time to do right now i'm not sure um i'd have to look at it you know um uh, i'm so rushing with it 
that I can't make good judgments on it right now. Yeah. But um, I'm sure there's lots of stuff that I'll look at this and continue to work on it. I, I have, have, I have, I a, have a suggestion. You, I have one suggestion for you. Yeah. Yeah. You know where you have your, your bright highlight? Yeah. Take a little bit of darken along that edge with with something a little cool and then that on the upper edge so that it contrasts with the rock behind it. Now all, all the way down. No, to the left, go to the, uh, see your bright highlight, go to the left of your bright highlight. No, not in there on the other opposite side. Oh, 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 I see. Yeah. Because if you push that rock, darken right there a little bit and then push that rock way back, It'll really stand out. That's worth. The problem is you got to make it darker and bluer because it's got to go recede. Yeah. We have a left-handed massage therapist. All right, Winnie. Well, you've got an audience glued here to you. I have so much more I could do to this. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just not it's just not a lot of time to do these quick. You're doing great. Stop making excuses. You're a rock star. No, it, it's it's just a reality for other people. <laughs> you know. Well, th this show uh, has been titled "Paint by Committee." Thank you, Jeff Eikoff. Why not? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. Why don't you come back on camera so we can see you? Okay. All, All right, right, everybody. Meet Richard Lindenberg. Hey. Hey. Richard, so, you're awesome, man. Thank you so much. Why don't you come to Austin and, and we'll hang out and paint and do a video? Uh, if I could fly, I would. Yeah. I still have a fear of flying. Well, then drive. Well, I'm going to go to Santa Fe. I'll see you there. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe we'll shoot some, maybe we'll shoot some videos in Santa Fe. Yeah. I'm not sure if I'm going to stay all five days, but, um, yeah, I'm going to make a trip out there. Do we have you listed as a field painter? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. All right. Outstanding. Well, tell everybody what the field painter thing is, because some people might not know. Okay. Um, you know, there's a lot of painters who are on stage uh, who are doing a specific task uh, that, you know, um, highlights their prowess. But there are a number of really highly qualified painters who are out in the field, they're called field painters at the convention. And our job is basically just to be out in the field with all the attendees to see if they need help. We don't offer it unless they ask. Uh, see if they need any help or paint a demo out in the field so they can watch out in the field. Usually we have a sign that goes in the ground so that uh, people can see that this is a uh, one of the field painters or one of the regular artists that are in. Well, you get a bright colored hat, you get a sign, you get a flag, yeah. and then people have these little pink signs they can wave if they see you walking by. It's like, hey, help me. Or they yeah, because every day we up. go out after the conventions, you know, quits at four o'clock or so. We go out in the field. We can't wait to paint. There's usually hundreds of painters in yeah. the same area doing these paintings. So yeah, I should mention that if you're thinking about going to the plein air convention, get signed up just in case we have to reduce attendance. You want to be one of the early ones in. I say right now you're safe and the next hundred people are safe. So get signed up quickly because they, you know, by May things will probably be open, but if they want to socially distance us, they're going to hold us to about six or 700 people. Right. Well, listen, I want to thank you, Eric, but all the people who have contributed their comments, they're very helpful. They really are. It's a, uh... Uh, it, it's just not a lot of time to do this and having more eyes on it points things out to me. So uh, maybe what I'll do is on plein air, where would I put it, Eric? If I finish this painting to my satisfaction at some point in the near future, I'll post it. Well, everybody should somewhere? follow Richard on, on, on social media. We've put yeah. it in the comments and also his website and Richard will post the finished painting. Yeah, Instagram is the easiest way to see all my paintings, but my website is quite lovely. So, yes, just like all your paintings, quite uh, lovely. Oh, yeah, they, they keep getting better. <laughs> yeah, well, you're doing a great job. Thank you so much for being on. Thumbs up and applause. 
for My Richard Lindenberg. Bye, everybody.